one of the tragedies of Africa is that we have very little regard for history. In fact, now it has been cancelled in our schools. Where were we 40 years ago, 50 years ago? What have we learned from other societies like India and China and Brazil? We copy a bit too quickly and too wrongly from elsewhere. And we also copy from the wrong sources. Mm -hmm. In 1986, we had this thing called the Structural Adjustment Program dumped on Africa. That destroyed most countries in Africa. Everything. And I am sorry to say, I am not an economist. I was in Hong Kong visiting with a friend when we heard on television that the auctioning began in April. Some auctioning of our national currency. Yeah, exactly. And it was three naira to one dollar. 1986. Yes. And economists in Nigeria said it was the only way out. Now, economics is honestly 90% common sense. Why are you auctioning your currency when what to do is to cut down on imports and, boost and stimulate export. local produ production? Why are you shipping in rice? That one began as far back as 1982, a task force on the importation of rice. I was a young man in the cabinet. I was 34 years old. And I asked the question, why not a task force for the production of rice? I was told, oh, you guys from the university, you don't know anything in the interim. Uh, let's just import. The bill rose to $5 million a day and remained so for nearly 30 years. From the, the Taiwanese? Yes. Taiwan, from uh, Thailand, Vietnam, and even India. You just ship your money out and shipping goods. And once the structural adjustment came, we added on to it free trade. So we opened our windows, our doors, our roofs, and any foreign good was arriving. Dumped in. Plastics that wouldn't last an hour in the, child, the hand of a child as toys, honey, sugar, milk, toothpicks, handkerchiefs, uh, pins on the table. We produce nothing. If you go to your house and look around, practically everything. Uh, what is it that is made here? Almost nothing. And we said it was perfect. Why? Oil and gas money. You ship out oil, send the proceeds to sustain other economies and bring in their goods. Along with the goods, unemployment and poverty. S started. Yeah. yeah. So then, we lost all our uh, 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 institutions, yes. uh, industries. Yes, exactly. The, now, the granite pyramids in the north. Everything disappeared because it was no longer fashionable. The textile to, industry to go Katuna. to the farm. So if you go to the southeast, between 1982 and 1990, 510 industries sprang up. I think the Igbos then decided, rather than uh, trade, we'll produce. Less than 90 of those industries are still running. The factories have closed, their owners have died. 500 industries. In this, the owners have died, their dreams have died. All of this is being caused by a fundamental problem. There is discomfort. There is major discontent all yes, over the so place. Young people have nothing to aspire to. Young people can't think of a day when they will marry, have a flat of their own, own a job, and even if they have a job today, the wage is too low, then they, at the bottom of it all again, is that since 1986, we've had the most tragic, the most tragic philosophy of economic management, where interest rates have stood on the average at between 25% and 35%. And no one now. and no one can invest with that kind of Now, thing. how do you borrow at 35% unless you are into crime? Maybe cocaine. What do you produce with 35% and buy your generator and buy your diesel and pay your tax and pay your workers a living wage? And when you talk about it, these brilliant people said they read in Harvard and, and Yale and Oxford, where in the world are interest rates this high now? 